What up, Texans fans? Round two. Booyah. Nick was cooking a bit. Um, we'll start off. 42nd overall pick. Uh, Kamari Lasseter, Georgia. Okay, I like that. I, I like that. I mean, if D'Amico says this is my kind of player, then I trust D'Amico. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, all signs point to a nickel corner. He already said he can do it. Anybody who knows football has said it. That's your nickel. Um, it's a good pickup. I mean, just think about it. He's going to replace Tavier Thomas. Tavier Thomas played a lot of snaps last year. Same. Yeah, that he did. Same um, I mean, he he played 29 career starts. Uh, I mean, that's solid right there for sure. Uh, zero touchdowns allowed. <laughs> I mean. I mean, he also helps because you're in the nickel. I wouldn't be surprised if D'Amico at, uh, at some point in the game, like, blitzes him. This dude can help in the run game. This dude can do a bunch of shit for you, um, yeah. especially when we play a nickel defense. So we're good. I like that. He was a second team all SEC in 2023. Um, didn't allow a single touchdown in 2023. Um, it's position versatility because, like, you could play the nickel because we, like, you would probably be the best option there if Okuda or Ford take the outside position. Uh, opposite of Stingley, but like everybody says, Stingley gets hurt anyway. So if you if need be, then you just bump Kamari to the outside. Yeah, and he even said it. He goes, "I'll play anywhere in the secondary." So it's it it's one of those tools that D'Amico has for sure. To like you said, versatility. So where hey, I need you to go play. Man, I need a screenshot of that picture of D'Amico and Casario right there. It's like that's the one. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, all in all, there was a lot of people mad that we didn't trade up, go get Kool-Aid and all that. But for this pick to hear D'Amico and Nick be pretty much happy. I mean, they had a Zoom meeting with him. They met him at the Combine. Um, so it's it's one of those things where it's like they did their due diligence. Uh, he's a, He sounds like he's a D'Amico guy, which we all know what that means. Um, it just... It seems like a good pick. Uh, what would you, I guess, grade this pick for? Oh. Because he doesn't have the name value, I can't give you, like, you're basically banking on diamond in the rough a little bit on this pick, but I'll give it, like, a B plus. I think that's fair. It's a good fit, you know what I'm saying, with the potential to get better. It's like. I mean, you're in the second. You starter, maybe not. Flirts with it a bit, but competitive. Can you know do certain things for the game and all that stuff? I, I like it in, in the sense of it. Um, now our next pick, of course, was that one was a, a bit questionable to people. Um, so that's why I wanted that screenshot of that picture of them on there because I'm gonna. I don't think D'Amico co-signed on that one. I don't think D'Amico co-signed on that one. I think that was that was uh, Casario, maybe best player available kind of situation, or getting depth at the at the O line. Which it, I get it, but also it's like I don't get it. Like you you the past two years you drafted so many linemen and you've just paid so many linemen. I I, I would have done something else with that pick to be honest. Yeah, I mean I'm trying to find. More on Blake Fisher. I mean, Notre Dame. Uh, what I suspect's about to happen, and this is just me wishful thinking, bro, is he took that tackle at 59 because he's about to trade a bunch of shit to get back in this third round and try to make uh, some shit happen and, and win the draft that way because, like, that's a little bit underwhelming to me. Yeah, I mean... Looking at like what he brings, physical, they say imposing presence. Um, he's an elite run blocker from what you know they're saying about him and all that stuff. So I mean, it makes sense of uh, beefing up, like you said, the the standpoint of it for Blake. The only Fisher. other way this makes sense to me is if you're about to trade fucking one of your tackles. That and that I think we've talked about it on our videos before that. I mean, you you said that there may be some trades on that old line to, to free some money up somewhere. Yep. 
This also makes me wonder about Kenyon Green's injury a bit. I just don't think that that matters because, I mean, if he sucks, you already have a replacement for him. It could nah, be Patterson or Scruggs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just, I mean, it's it was weird. That was not the direction I was expecting to go, um, at least not in the second round. Um, what would you rate this one, I guess, uh, for a grade? Oh, I'll give that a, a – fuck. I'm not familiar with I, – I want to say like a C plus, C, C plus. Yeah. I, I, I didn't consider that a position to need. So I said he's 6'5", 310 pounds, played 98% of his snaps at right tackle for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. He is a development prospect but has shown flashes with his length, light feet, and nimbleness. Some scouts believe he should have stayed in school. Super young prospect. Mm. Feels like we might have reached for him. That's but true. also, people thought we reached last year for Jared Patterson, and he actually did really well. It, it's one of those things where it's like, if you trust Nick, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll get some more insight for sure on the pick. Um, I think the C minus, C around there, I like it for now. It's a project. Um, Good luck, D'Amico. Good luck, Bobby Slowick. Uh, but all in all, I mean, for as much hype, I mean, it feels like our offseason also. The much hype that we had up here is like, eh. Well, we got seven more picks to play with here. I, I'm, I'll am i tell you this. We got seven more picks to play with. I'd like to get one more start, what potential starter before we leave this draft. All right. For this video, do you see Nick trading back up? Yes. 100 percent I, I i believe you to trade up and, and you're, you're gonna either chase a running back somewhere in the late third i could see you chasing a linebacker like jeremiah trotter in the third um i don't i didn't think we would go o-line which makes me think we might go receiver if one falls to you like i'm telling you bro if a malachi corley or somebody's still there hey fuck it let's see what we can do yeah and i mean he was nick was trying to trade up in the first didn't happen Second, he didn't trade up, even though I'm pretty sure he was making calls. I don't see him not going in this draft and trading up at all. Like that, he's gonna trade, make trades. He made eight last year, so we'll see if it's in the third, the fourth. I almost dare say I see a couple trades coming, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with like at least two more trades coming up. The third, the third round will be the one that we we take a look at for sure. Um, as for the second, drop your comments. What do you grade the second round of the of the Texans? Um, are you happy with it? I know on our Facebook there's a few people not. But that being said, like, subscribe. Be ready for round three. Much love, Texans fan. We out. How much I'm working for this? I swear my dreams are too important.